Well, welcome to the final Caravan Diary ever. After making over a hundred editions of the Caravan Channel TV show over five years and nearly 90 video clips of the Caravan Diary in about 20 months, I've decided to hang up my touring hat. So here's where we're off to next. It's a beautiful campsite less than 15 minutes from our front door. It has a relatively small touring area, plus an even smaller adults-only touring section. It has a lovely lake with specially constructed artificial beach for the summer. It has wooded areas you can stroll through and you'll eventually come to a proper football field right next to a small but well-kept nine-hole golf course. A few yards further you'll reach an area with a beach volleyball court, three hard surface tennis courts and if you're inclined towards quieter recreation a very secluded bowling green. What else? Well, it has static or holiday caravans, all owned by individuals with no hires or hire fleet, set out in well-maintained and attractive settings. Some are very modern and pretty expensive, but there are also plenty of older models, some of which come up for sale from time to time. And at the beginning of August, when we usually stop touring while sites are jammed with holidaymakers, we bought one of those older caravans. Over the past two or three years of making my caravan diary videos, one of the things that's become increasingly and increasingly clear is the number of people moving to really just seasonal sites. It's actually gone to the extent now that on some sites you have a walk round on a Sunday evening and you see maybe 20 or 30 percent of the pitches are occupied by unoccupied seasonally pitched caravans. It's fine, no big problem because we've decided it's time for us to ease off on the touring and what we've done is not buy a seasonally pitched caravan, we've bought a static caravan which we actually like rather a lot. Statics compared to seasonally pitched caravans do give you one thing and that's a huge amount of space in comparison with a touring caravan, even a touring caravan like the Bailey Retreat that's actually been designed to stand in one spot. This little caravan of ours cost a quarter of the money of a Bailey Retreat and at a, at a rough guess I guess it's at least twice the floor area of their biggest caravan. So it gives us loads of space, loads of room to do what we want, loads of living space and we've also got uh, an outside area that's about twice the size of the caravan that's really just ours. So we've got a lot of space and we're paying roughly the same per annum as what it would cost us to have a seasonal pitch. We can use our static for seven months of the year and plan really to do mostly that. It's in a lovely part of the countryside, it's just 10 miles away from our front door, so we don't have big fuel bills to get to it either. So from my point of view and from Dot's point of view, the whole calculation to get a static works really well. So here's where we'll be planning to spend most of our springs, summers and autumns from here on in. For all of you who've been with us through all or part of our 10 year journey through the touring world, I've enjoyed your company. If you'd like to know what we're doing next, well, you'll find some snippets on my own blog which I'll now be updating more frequently and on my site at www.retiredlife.tv. The Caravan Diary site with nearly 90 videos online will also be available to you into the future. Whatever you do, have a great time.